Good morning. What a magnificent morning it is. The sun is peeking through the trees off and on. And I'm sitting here in our retreat center. Behind me is our gazebo surrounded by the most magnificent hickory trees. And today, I thought to talk to you about prayer. Let us understand what prayer is. Prayer has no religion. It has no specific individual God that you have to honor. But definitely prayer is to the divine. What we do not understand, that when we pray to the divine, we first pray to the divine within us. It's even beyond your soul self. Because your soul is just the part of you that came for this incarnation. We come, we have a higher self. We call it the I am presence. That is directly connected to our Supreme Creator. Our Mother, Father, God first, and then our Supreme Creator. Most of the time that we pray, when we pray for things, we go through to our higher self. But let's examine what prayer really is. Prayer is asking a source that is beyond our reach, beyond our capability. And so let's not call it energy, because we need to really call it God. But the term God has been associated with the, this religion, that religion, that religion, and their concept of God. No, there's only one. How you wish to look at God, it doesn't matter. What form you wish to give it, it doesn't matter. I understood that in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8. Arjun asked Krishna, how should I worship you? In form or thinking about you without form? Because in Hinduism, you can do either one. And Krishna said, it is so much easier for a person who is in form to worship me in a form. He didn't say specific form. He didn't say as Krishna. He said in a form. Because our mind thinks in terms of a form. And so we have taken the word God and we have put in Christianity, we have put Christ. We have taken, and in other, some people worship Krishna, some people worship, they, everybody worships differently. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Because we are all individual, individual, uh, individual beings with individual feelings, with individual ideas. And that is absolutely perfect. Just like God created so many different trees, a variety of trees that I can uh, be overwhelmed with, similarly has created so many beautiful personalities that we inhabit. So, I wish to ask you to, uh, to th really examine what is prayer. 
Prayer is a very powerful thought form. Why is it powerful? Because it's not coming from our ego. Prayer requires us to surrender the ego and ask God to please take care because we cannot. And usually the prayer is, give me this, give me that. No. The prayer should be for everyone. And if you should wish to pray for something for yourself, you always need to answer or end that prayer with for the highest good of my higher self and the highest good for all involved. And what do we mean by the highest good? The highest good is our evolution. Back to the source, back to God. And that's where we need to go. We need to go back to God. And in prayer, it's such a beautiful expression that we surrender our individuality, we surrender our ego, and we come with a peaceful mind or with a, uh, what's the word? I'm looking for a word, it will come to me. We come and we ask for help. Or we ask that the world be peaceful. Or we pray for someone else. And every single prayer is heard. Are you aware of that? Every single prayer. And sometimes we just need to sit down in humility, with humility, and ask that we get the strength to face the day. Not necessarily, I want this as a result or that result. God, give me the strength. God, give someone else the strength. And let's take a look. Do not associate God with religion. I asked my neighbor here, up here, I said, do you go to a church? He says, no. He says, do I want, I don't want some minister in between me and my personal God. All I have to do is look at Mother Nature and I am talking to God. And that's exactly the point. When we can have a conversation with the divine, but it has to be with humility. But then again, I've also yelled and said, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why didn't you? And that's also okay. As long as you begin to feel that there, that's what prayer is a feeling that you can communicate to a divinity. It is like talking to a friend. And you know what? It, that communication is heard. It is heard by your higher self. It is heard by your guardian angel. It is heard by other angels. It is heard by your guides. And if it is for your highest good, guess what? They will try to facilitate. And they will try to give the power to it. So prayer is the most profound attitude and an attitude of prayer, of humility, and attitude of prayer is a most profound tool that we can use. You see, 
when we were placed on this planet to explore, the Lord did not leave us. Here, go, and then run away. See what you can do. We have so many helpers. We, we are guided constantly. Some people call it grace. You are surrounded by divine energy. You are surrounded by energy that wishes to help. You are surrounded by divine grace. And not only are we surrounded by divine grace, like I said before, when we pray, we also pray to our higher selves, our I am presence, our soul. Everyone believes that the soul is there, but we don't speak to our soul. To speak to our soul, we need to talk with humility. We need to release the intellect. We need to release our ego. We need to come and bow our head and understand that when I bow my head, my ego must take second space. That is the idea of bowing down, releasing the ego, releasing that I am the only one, which is what we really feel. We cannot take care of everything in life. We have limited ability. We need we definitely need the help of our soul, our guardian angels. We need the help of all the angels. And these are all messengers from the divine that are here to assist us. So prayer will get you through life. Prayer, the most important part of our life, is prayer. Because without it, we feel stressed. With prayer, we can relax and feel confident that we are in the hand of the Lord. And prayer can be as simple, thank you, Lord. When I ask you to do your gratitude list, that is like a prayer, thank you, Lord. I can be grateful for these things. It is so important. And in the olden days, we used to make the children sit down in the evening and say their prayer before going to sleep. And that was a most magnificent thing to do. Because when you wake up in the morning, you will go back to what happened the last minute you fell asleep in order to identify yourself. Because in the morning when you wake up, it goes very fast. But sometimes when you have slept very deeply, you don't know who you are or where you are when you wake up. And then you have to reflect to the last moment that you went to bed or went to sleep. And if you should have gone to sleep with a prayer, you will wake up with a prayer. That is how powerful going to sleep with a prayer is. And when you go to sleep with a prayer, then you also will ask the Lord to guide you in your dream, in your astral plane. Because when we are sleeping, we are still working, we are still learning, we are still helping. We might even be helping others. And then we will be guided where we need to be during that sleep. So prayer before sleep is very important. And some people prefer a specific prayer that has been put together by the churches or by the mantras or whatever. That is fine too. But remember, they come off our lips sometimes with the mind going somewhere else because we have done them so often. We need to bring the mind into the prayer. And that's a wonderful way, because when you have a repetitive prayer, we call that a mantra, what happens when your mind is idle, 
it has to speak. It has to think. And what it will do is it will just go into previous and neural pathways that we have created. And most of those are not in a positive fat manner because fear and, and, dis, uh, and problems are the ones we think about most. And so they have created the strongest neural pathways. So when we have a mantra or a prayer, in a, any prayer, that is short, or just plain OM, which is a little bit too short for some, then what happens is that when our mind is idle, the prayer comes in, or the mantra comes in. And then it keeps our mind from going into negative things. You see how much the Lord has blessed us. All we need to do is say a prayer on a regular basis, or a mantra, or a prayer, and our mind will automatically flow to it. The more we say it, the more the mind will go there. When the mind is idle, maybe it will go into our, our Father, the Lord, or it will go Om Namah Shivaya. Oh, or it will go into any one of the prayers, it doesn't matter. Whichever prayer that you do on a regular basis. That is the beauty about prayer. Prayer gives us strength. No, no for sure. Without the help of your divine, and without the help of the divine, we cannot accomplish. We cannot change. We cannot do things. The energy that we have to do things in a proper manner comes from the divinity. And divinity resides within us. It resides in our heart center. And the Upanishads, they talk about the heart being a lotus, a beautiful lotus. And in the center of the lotus is a pilot light. You know those pilot lights we used to have in stoves? They never went out. They're there to ignite other energy. And that pilot light is divine light. That is God inside of your heart. Because nothing can be there permanently unless it was divine. And that light is divine. It resides in every single individual. And the more we f feed that light, then the lotus begins to open slowly. If we do not, and when we pray, the heart opens because we have taken away the the shields that we have surrounded around the heart because we have been afraid and so forth. And they are absolutely were necessary at the time. But now it's time to understand that once you open the heart, what you're actually doing is allowing your divinity to come through. You're allowing God to work through you. And so as you pray, you begin to give energy to that light. And as that divine light within you opens up, so does the lotus. And the idea eventually will be to have the lotus open completely so that you can be a sword, a source, and a channel for the Lord. On this planet, the Lord has given us this planet to explore, but he also has a clause in there, no interference. He cannot interfere. We, unless, unless we ask. So if the lotus is closed, the divine light is there, 
And we never ask. It's the only way to open that lotus. And when you see people that are doing horrible things and that have, are full of hatred, know that they have not done their prayer with humility. You see, without humility, the prayer cannot go. You may go to church, you may recite everything, but if there is not a slight bit of humility within you, and it doesn't take much to remove the ego, then there can be no hate for anything that the Lord has created. The beautiful world that we are in. And you almost have to feel compassion for those that have not seen or felt that divinity within them. And with that, because you have that compassion, then it is time for us to pray that the Lord will open their eyes and let their heart open up. You see, our prayer will allow that energy to flow to them. Our prayers have no dimension. Our prayers can go millions of miles. Our prayers are super powerful. And don't think of it in terms of energy and this and that. It is the divine. It is God. It is past our being. Nothing, nobody can be. Whoops, flies are saying, photobombing this. So prayer is most important. And when we say a prayer, which we always say when we start at Yoga Shakti, which I will do either in Sanskrit or in English, which we will do at the end, you need to bring your heart into it, not just say it from the mind and the intellect. You see, the mind and the intellect is channeled through, it's, it's brought through the, through the ego, the heart when the heart speaks, and when you speak something beautiful, they say it is a very heartfelt speech. Because once the heart speaks, then you're, divine, then you're asking your intuition, your higher self, your Vijnana Maya Kosh to come through. In AA, they learned that they cannot, you cannot give up a bad habit by using our intellect. You need the power of God to help us. And that is the success of AA. But it's only a success if the person can release the ego and say, Lord, I am helpless. Please guide me. What to do? Yes. And then the Lord will guide you. He will send his messengers in the way of angels, in the way of other people, in the way of nature, in the way of a dog, the messengers of the divine are all over. We just don't see them. And they are always with us. Have you ever driven down a street that you go to work in and you go that way all the time and all of a sudden you turn the wrong direction? What happened? Somebody made you turn the wrong direction. And then you find out there was an accident over there that you avoid it. 
Who was that? That was the divine grace that has been helping you along. Know that it is the most powerful thing that we have. And don't shun away from the word prayer. Don't shun away from the word God. Don't associate it necessarily with a religion unless you firmly are established. Allow, allow your, your heart to open in prayer, but only with humility. And so, here is my request. If you are a student of Archangel Michael, you have learned to go into your pyramid before going to sleep and allowing your guides to make your mind peaceful. If you are a student of any religion, then you have learned certain prayers. If you are a naturalist and said, there is no God, it's only energy, and it's an evolution, I don't care how you look at it, then say a prayer to that energy. Before retiring. Because you understand, you, we don't understand. Once we go to sleep, we go into the astral plane. And there, we will be continuing to be instructed and given strength and energy. And when something feels overwhelming, it's okay to just say, Lord, give me strength. Lord, show me the way. Lord, I need your help. I cannot do it. That's the humility that is needed. It's not that difficult. And the grace that will shower beyond, around you is immense. But also know that you are constantly surrounded by divine grace. We are never left alone. God put a protective shield around us. It is everywhere. We are his children, or her children. So, know that a prayer is the most important thing that you can do. In the morning, I ask you to sit down and write a gratitude list. And now add to that gratitude list, Lord, I am thankful for this. Lord, thank you for that. Th Lord. Thank you for the blessing you have given me. Lord, thank you for the strength that you have given me. Lord, I bow down. You must bow down and release the ego. This is why in all the religious orders, in the orders themselves, they have you prostrate in front of the divinity or in front of Mother Superior. That's okay. What is that supposed to do? You're not. You're not emulating them as God. You are releasing your ego. That is what that does. You're releasing your ego. It is not that you're bowing to an individual. And when we say this, we are bowing to the divine within you, which is what I told you the heart center has. So don't think that when you have humility that you're giving up something. You're only giving up the ego, the false ego. You're only giving up the part of you that is not accepting divine energy. That is what you're giving up when you don't bow your head to that divine energy. And no one's life has been easy. 
And wouldn't it be nice to be able to make it easier for us? It might not change the circumstance, but it might just change me to be able to deal with the circumstance. It might just change the way I look at things. And it also remember to say prayer for those that are suffering. Compassion, a compassionate prayer is a prayer for those that are suffering. And it is heard. It is heard. And if it isn't heard, if you have a specific individual in mind and they do not wish to receive the prayer, you know what happens? It is the most magnificent thing. It is held up within their soul body or their higher self. It is that prayer is held and is waiting for them to just release for a second to receive a prayer. It comes down. So no prayer is ever wasted. Understand this power of prayer. It is most magnificent power of prayer. And with the world in such a turmoil right now, we must pray for peace. We must pray for the souls that are in such pain. We must pray every day. Lord, grant them strength. Grant them strength. And our prayers are heard because that way the Lord can come through and give strength to the people that are suffering. So as I'm looking over here, the deer are running over there, and so it's magnificent. You should come up here. Everyone may come up here. It's social distancing, so just let me know when you want to come and then nobody else is coming. Walk in nature and see the beauty of God. See the beauty that is created. And with this, I will end with our prayer. And this is the prayer for world peace. And so, let your heart come into this prayer. Let your heart think about what we're saying, even though you do know it by heart and your mind can go off to something else. Let your heart come into this prayer. And maybe you wish to close your eyes so that you are not distracted. Or maybe you wish to look at the heavens whichever, but bring your heart into the prayer. O oh Lord, may your hand lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May all be happy. May all be peaceful. May all be enlightened and cultured. May all attain perfection. May peace be established in the three bodies of man. May peace be established in the three worlds. May peace be established everywhere. May truth be our religion. May service be our worship. May knowledge be our breath. May world be our family. May yoga and meditation be our way. May our eyes see happy and noble things. May our ears hear happy and truthful words. May our tongues be sweet and truthful. May our bodies be divine instruments.
May noble thoughts come to us from all corners of the universe. May we never leave God. May God never leave us. Om peace and love. Om peace and health. Om peace and enlightenment. Om Shanti 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 Oh